don't what made me just think of Ricky Bridge for. But I just <laughs> sat here and I just started thinking about Ricky Bridge for. Ricky Bridge for. He, so he started selling headstones at the end, uh, probably last couple of years. Everybody's funeral. There was never a funeral in South Memphis that Ricky Bridge for wasn't at. Uh, he passed a couple months ago. And uh, I was just thinking, uh, because that's the problem, and this isn't in the message, that's a problem that we have in the community here, uh, is that we got people that are two paychecks from being broke themselves looking down on people in the hood. Yeah. Y'all got the same grandmama, same friends, went to the same school, go to the same church, and we can't connect on anything. It's already setting up in this mayor's race where it looks like we're going to have about nine black candidates just prime for one white candidate to get in the race yeah. and, and win yeah. because nobody will back down. But it's just amazing. We need, we talking about Wakanda forever. We could be that if we just stick together. It's just so sad. People from other cities come to Memphis and they say, how's this man congressman? And how's this man mayor? And it's just so many of us. But we can't come together on nothing. We, we got to do better than this, folk. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, we got people that are being snooty. And you came from where that person came from. You got family still where that person came from, because some of them out in Collierville, but your mama still stay in the hood. <laughs> your church in the hood. One of the worst things I thought was a couple of years ago, a lady's house was falling down in South Memphis, and Thaddeus Matthews had to put it on his show to help save this lady from her house falling in when she's right across the street from a major church. Now they got they parking in front of our house every Sunday. Nobody looking in on a plight, nobody saying anything. All of this is off the grid, but we can do better in Memphis. <laughs> let's 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 try to love our brother and sister. Because if they come after us all and the Republicans, now that they got the house back, they gonna try to be mean as I don't know what. I don't ever preach politics, but sometimes politics is a way of saying other things that they can't say officially. But we finna catch it. <laughs> so you better hold on to his hand, cause it ain't coming nowhere else. So uh, that's that. Turn your Bibles to um, Jeremiah 1 verses 4 through 10. Uh, I don't want you all to think that we just ain't driving blindly because God's also, actually if you're driving, you're in the wrong seat. <laughs> God should be driving and we should be the co-pilot. Jeremiah 1 says in verse 4, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou comest out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. The message Bible says it just like this, and I'll, I'm moving fast. This is what God said. Before I shaped you in the womb, I knew all of you. Before you saw the light of day, I had holy plans for you. A prophet to the nations, that's what I had in mind for you. But I said, hold it, Master God, look at me. Don't know anything, I'm only a boy. God told me, don't say I'm only a boy. I'll tell you where to go and you go there. I'll tell you what to say, and you'll say it. Don't be afraid of a soul. I'll be right there looking after you. God's decree. God reached out 
touch my mouth and said, look, I've just put my words in your mouth, hand delivered. See what I've done. I've given you a job to do among nations and governments a red letter day. Your job is to pull up and tear down, take apart and demolish, and then start over building and planting. Verse 5 again, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth, comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Uh, I want to preach from the subject, God has a masterful plan for your life. God has a masterful plan for your life. This verse caught my attention because it points to a plan and a purpose that God had for Jeremiah's life even before Jeremiah was born. God had called Jeremiah before Jeremiah had ever seen the light of day. God had a plan for Jeremiah's life even before his birth. Well, saints of God, even though Jeremiah was a major prophet, I feel like God didn't single him out as some anomaly as far as God's plans and purposes are concerned. Saints, I feel that God has a plan and a purpose for each one of our lives. It's amazing how cavalier we can be even though God has a masterful plan for our lives. In the book of Acts chapter 10 verse 24, the following words are recorded. Then Peter opened his mouth and said of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. I echo Peter's sentiments, so I don't feel that Jeremiah is some freak of nature. I feel that God has a masterful plan for each one of our lives. God has plans and purposes for our lives even before we even knew life to be our own. Before your mama knew your daddy, before your granddaddy winked at your grandmama to go around back. God knew what he was going to do in your life. God has a foreknowledge that is so unprecedented. God knew Jeremiah even before he was formed in the belly. Then God sanctified and set apart Jeremiah before he ever came out of the womb. Yeah. Then God ordained Jeremiah as a prophet unto the nations. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I believe that God has a masterful plan for your life too. I feel that God has a call over all of our lives that preceded our own recognition of things. Before we were ever a glimmer in the eyes of our foreparents, God already had a plan that said third generation bill or fourth generation bill or fifth generation bill is going to do something big for me. God already had a plan and a purpose for our lives. Going forward, never ever undervalue any moment in your life because that's a moment that God not only foreknew, but it's a, God, a moment that God still had expectations of you. Jeremiah 29, verses 11 through 13. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go up and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me. How many seekers do we have in the house on the day? When ye shall search for me with all your heart. Saints, God has a masterful plan for your life. This plan preceded your birth. This plan preceded your current bills and problems. This plan preceded your constant fights with depression. God has holy plans for your life. When an all-seeing and all-knowing God has plans for your life, then that makes it incumbent that each one of us discovers God's masterful plan for our lives. God intended that you would be the solution to some of today's and tomorrow's problems way back when. If God gave us a call, 
that call proceeded all that we know, then we should rest in the surety that God will keep us and push us onwards to victory. If God gives the call, and he's an all-seeing, all-knowing, uh, do everything God, omnipotent God, then why wouldn't you have faith in the call that God gave you? I'm not talking about some jelly wag from the hood, from around the way, your big brother sway from around the way. I'm talking about the God, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords has a masterful plan for your life. A God that can see things coming with such clarity is a valuable asset to any one of our walks towards purpose. How can our enemies outmatch a God that can discern their plans before the plans of our enemies were ever had? God has the ability to set times, agendas, and seasons. Acts 1 and 7 states, he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has fixed uh, by his own authority. Daniel 2 verse 21, he changes times and seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. Saints, God is working behind the scenes, mending and patching with the enemy has meant for your evil and he's turning it around for your good. God has a masterful plan for your life. The gentleman from Tennessee he calls the apostle John to the stand. John and John says, yes Steve. Uh, did you write, I'm asking, in 3 John 2, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth. Uh, and John said, that's what I wrote, Steve. Saints, I believe that the apostle John had tapped into the mind of God in this text that he penned. God has a masterful plan for each one of our lives. Now, I feel that you're thinking that God only calls those who preach, teach, evangelize, pastor, prophesy, and move apostolically. But saints, God has a call and a purpose for your life too. Our God knew each one of us before we even knew ourselves. God has the ability to place gifts, talents, and purposes like no other. God also has the power to bring empowerment to all the purposes that he intends. Saints, if God has put a purpose within you, then God also has placed the fulfillment of that purpose within you. In this text, Jeremiah states that he could not speak because he was a child, much like Moses who extolled his difficulty with speech. Uh, uh, and that's a word for some of y'all that said that I don't... Uh, I don't speak eloquently enough. I got a person that I'm beating over the head and another one I got my eyes on. They're always talking about their speech. You trust God to put the words in your mouth at that moment, at that time. God will give you one or two words with sincerity that mean more than volumes spoken from somebody else's mouth. If you're going to say anything, ask God to anoint your mouth. And God will give you two or three words. He'll give you some of the more old words. He'll give you some ebonics that will tear the house up. God can do it right now. I mean, everybody that's up at the top of the ladder and on the big perch, all of them ain't speaking, uh, speaking great English. There's some folks killing the game that's killing every verb. You know what I'm saying? I, I, they do. So how many of y'all know uh, from now on you ain't gonna let nobody spook you? Didn't you hear me read earlier when I said, God said, don't look at the looks on their faces. God has a purpose for you. Uh, Moses said that I'm slow of speech and slow of tongue, but God gave him the words where he said, L -l let my people go. It's still working. Saints, I'm telling you right now on this morning, God has a masterful plan for your life. Jeremiah also found a way for his personal insecurities. Uh, I heard Dion saying this a couple weeks ago, and, and you know, a whole lot of folks are mad at Dion because Dion said Miss Swack on fire, and they are 11 and 0 going to a major bowl game and in the top 10. Old brother Dion said this. He said, pardon me if my confidence is rattling your insecurities. Oh, boy, that'll preach right there. <laughs> 
that will preach right there. His confidence is rattling a lot of people's insecurities. But folks, it's not confidence in our own thing. We're just filthy rags that's dressed up on this morning. Everything that we are is because of the G-R-A-C-E of God, the grace of God, God's riches at Christ's expense. Uh, Jeremiah also found a way for his personal ins insecurities to come to the forefront as an execute, as an excuse for not executing God's plan for his life. Jeremiah felt that he was so inexperienced to the moment that God was calling him to. And I'm speaking against any trepidation that you may have because God is calling you higher. God is calling some of you to great moments. I wish I could say your name, but I see your face right now. You're in the building. But you've been allowing the feelings from your past, the pain from your past, the drama from your past, and all the hurts from your past to make you second guess God. If God called you, why would you question a God that knows what's going to happen before it happens? Please know that wherever we are weak, our God is strong. Saints, I feel that God is calling each of us onward and upward. God has use for every one of us. All of our insecurities and personal misgivings should be shunned because uh, uh, this is what, as I should say again, from this text. Then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. It's been that long. God, for ages, God has destined you to be great. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. God set you apart. God made a way. God caused you to be other than. And I ordained thee as a prophet unto the nations. Not just somebody talking around the way and around the block. God made you a prophet unto the nations. Look at somebody tell them it's bigger than what you think. Your call is bigger than what you think. Then said I, our Lord God, behold, I can I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said to me, Say not, I am a child, for thou hast, thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Here it is. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee. God is with you when you scatter them faces. Don't be scared of them. Uh, they, you have a distinct advantage. Though they outnumber you a million to one, you outnumber them if it's just you and your God. <laughs> I'm telling you that on this morning. Be not afraid of their faces, for I'm with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. God may personally never touch either one of our mouths, but do we even need it because we got God's written word right here with us? God's word should be in our mouths anyway. It's incumbent for us to keep God's word in our mouth. Joshua 1 and 8 says this, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. How many of y'all want some good success? Psalm 1, verse 1 through 3. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. How many of y'all want whatsoever you're doing to prosper? God has an amazing plan for your life. Saints of God, we are king's kids. A chosen generation, a royal priesthood. God's plans for our lives is so much larger than what we plan for ourselves. We're
we're often satisfied being the big man or the big woman on the block when God has called us to the nations. Isaiah 55, Isaiah said, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down and snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and make it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word, listen to this, that go forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where whitherto I send it. See, my brothers and sisters in Christ, you've been going around thinking that your life was just an accident caused by your pairs on some hot summer night. But God had already arranged for your life for his plans and purposes many years ago. God had destined your arrival to show forth his praise and extol his presence. God's not working on your case, but God has already finished your case and taken his seat. Take this fresh from the press. I have heard the groan from the throne. God has a masterful plan for your life. God doesn't want you just making it from here to there. God doesn't want you to be robbing Peter to pay Paul and dodge Andrew and run from Matthew and dodge Mark. God wants you, has a masterful plan for your life. Right from the hood, right from South Memphis, 38126, the court zip code in Memphis, Tennessee, despite where you came from, God had a masterful plan for your life. You grew up with Popsicle, you grew up with Peppermint Patty, you grew up with, with Milkshake, you grew up with Lopakers, and all the folks. Social media, I see some folks from South Memphis, right over there in Lamont Garden, and I see the beautiful work that God has done in their life. I see them excelling over here. I love seeing my folks doing well because they were spoken over in our lives. Some of you have had negative spoken over your life.
distraction can be an awful foe. It seems so friendly. It's friendly foe. Takes your mind off what it should be concentrating on. What they're doing is incredible. What she is doing is incredible. What he is doing is incredible. Celebrate what others are doing. Thanks. <laughs> 